Unsolved Mystery, 14 Interesting and Tragic Facts About Elizabeth Short, The Black Dahlia Some people see Elizabeth Short as a real-life femme fatale from a thriller. She was a wannabe actress who walked the mean and dangerous streets of 1940s in Los Angeles, and she also had connections to some very dangerous men. Sadly, like many women of film noir, Short had a brutal end to her life, even more sadistic than most horror movies. Her senseless attack by an unknown assailant created a media frenzy that literally stopped the country in its tracks. But who was Elizabeth Short? Let's peel back the fiction and get some true facts about Elizabeth Short, aka the Black Dahlia. 1. She was number 3. Elizabeth Short was number 3 in a quintet of daughters. She was born on July 29, 1924, to Cleoa Short and his wife Phoebe May Sawyer. Short's father had a great idea to make money and invested and built his own miniature golf courses. 2. He never came home. When the stock market crashed in 1929, Short's father lost everything he had. Cleo is short had a wife and five kids to feed, and he had no idea how he was going to do it. Despondent, he got into his car and drove to the Charles Town Bridge. Short's father didn't come home that night, or any night after that. Elizabeth Short was just six years old at the time. 3. She was one of many. Short went to California. She was visiting Lt. Joseph Gordon Fickling, whose station was in Long Beach. She got a job as a waitress in a room in a boarding house located behind a nightclub on Hollywood Boulevard. Short's boarding house was behind the Florentine Gardens, a nightclub owned by Mark Hansen. Short's roommate was Ann Toth, who was also Hansen's girlfriend. Some say that Short was also linked to Hansen romantically, which would make living with Toth a little awkward. 4. She got serious. It was during this time in Los Angeles that Elizabeth Short became more determined to start a career in show business. She had spoken to someone about appearing as an extra in a movie. She had also talked Hansen into letting her perform at his nightclub. Like other young women hanging around Hollywood, she had a one in a million chance of succeeding. 5. But she acted suspiciously. Toth said that Short often made furtive calls from the phone line at Florentine Gardens, Hansen's nightclub. On January 2, 1947, Short sent a letter to Toth and asked her for some money. French said that a few days after Short sent the letter, some men came to her house looking for Short. French noticed that Short was very anxious as the car pulled up in front of her home. Toth found out that Short was secretly calling a man named Maurice Clement, who worked for Columbia Studios. This was likely the man who was getting Short a job as an extra. But there was something else here. Sure, Clement worked in the movie business, but he also had ties to gangs. His circle of associates included Murder Incorporated founder Bugsy Siegel and boxer Mickey Cohen, both known for being brutal in their many illicit dealings. Six, she had a weak interest. In early January 1947, Short began an affair with Robert Manley, who his friends called Red. His name may have been Manley, but he was hardly a gentleman. You see, Manley already had a wife, and was seeing Short on the side. The two wanted to get away from the city, and the chance of getting caught, so they went for a short visit to San Diego. When the trip was over, Manley drove Short back to LA. Once they arrived, Short told him to drop her off at the Biltmore Hotel. Short said she had a plan to meet her sister, who was visiting from Boston, at the hotel. Sadly, she'd meet her dark fate instead. 7. A mother and her toddler found Elizabeth Short's body. 
On the morning of January 15, 1947, Betty Bersinger was pushing her three-year-old daughter Anne in a stroller down the sidewalk, heading to a shoe repair shop. She paused when she noticed what she thought was a mannequin lying in the grass. But as she looked closer, she discovered it was something much more alarming, a mutilated corpse. Bersinger grabbed Anne and ran to a nearby house, where she used the telephone to call the police. Authorities arrived on the scene just a few minutes later, kick-starting what would become a years-long investigation, that many people are still trying to solve. 8. There was no blood found at the scene. The naked body Bersinger discovered was in horrifying condition. In addition to being cut completely in half at the waist, and having her intestines removed, Short's mouth had been slashed from ear to ear, giving her face a ghastly, semi-smiling appearance known as a Glasgow smile. Her body had also been washed clean before it was left to be found. Despite the severe mutilation, there was no blood at the scene, leading police to conclude that the young woman had been murdered somewhere else, drained of blood, then cleaned before the killer dumped her body. 9. The FBI identified Short with fingerprints and a proto-fax machine. In order to identify the body, the Los Angeles Police Department pulled fingerprints off the corpse, which it then sent to the FBI through a device called a sound photo, a forerunner to the fax machine. About an hour later, the FBI got a hint and was able to identify the victim as 22-year-old Elizabeth Short. Short's fingerprints had been entered into the system twice before, once when she applied to work in the commissary of a U.S. Army base and once when she was arrested in Santa Barbara. California on September 23, 1943 for underage drinking. 10. Some linked the case to the lipstick murder. One month after Short's murder, another woman's body was discovered in Los Angeles, and the circumstances mimicked the Black Dahlia's case in a few ways. It all began with a stranger, in this case, a construction worker, stumbling upon the naked body of a dead woman in the grass. Jean French had dark hair like shorts, and her face was also badly beaten. But this time, there was an unusual message scrawled on her stomach in bright red lipstick, BD. Just below that were the letters text. People were quick to link the BD in the gruesome murder to the Black Dahlia, but the police were wary of officially connecting the two. Like short, French's murder was never solved. 11. Many people confessed to the crime. The LAPD had to rule out many suspects in the Black Dahlia investigation, including several people who turned themselves in. Though some sources quote a lower number, the Los Angeles Times puts the tally of false confessions in Short's case at more than 500. The phony claims came from housewives, clergymen, soldiers, drunk ramblers, and, much later, pranksters who weren't even alive when Short's life was brutally taken. 12. No charges were ever filed. The FBI files on the Black Dahlia case indicate that many men were held for questioning, and some even took polygraph tests, but ultimately, no one was ever charged with Short's murder. Still, a few names stand out. 13. George Hodel is one of the most notorious suspects. One of those names is George Hodel, a physician who ran a venereal disease clinic in Los Angeles in the 1940s. According to The Guardian, Hodel was on a list of six primary suspects in the Black Dahlia case, and the LAPD even bugged his home during the investigation. But Hodel, who died in 1999, gained more recent notoriety when his son, Steve Hodel, accused him of killing Short in the 2003 best-selling book Black Dahlia Avenger, The True Story. Steve claims his father's handwriting matches strange letters the police received, supposedly from the killer. He also uncovered photos of a woman who resembles Short in his father's personal photo album, and believes Hodel's medical background would explain the precise, clinical cuts on the body. But some have discounted Steve's claims since he started linking his father to other infamous unsolved murders, including the Zodiac killings. 14. Others think it was a bellhop. Another name that's popular among Black Dahlia theorists is Leslie Dillon. He appears in the FBI case files, but gained renewed attention in 2017 when author Pew Eatwell argued his guilt in her book Black Dahlia, Red Rose. 
Dylan was a bellhop, writer, and mortician's assistant who seemed to know a surprising amount of details about Short's murder when the LAPD hauled him in for questioning. In 2018, Buzz Williams, a retired officer with California's Long Beach Police Department and the son of Richard F. Williams, part of the LAPD's gangster squad, told Rolling Stone, quote, My dad, Leslie Dillon, was the killer, and added that other cops suspected that Dillon was, at the very least, an accomplice. And you? What do you think about it? Who is the murderer? Will we ever know the truth or it's too late? Let us know in the comments. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and to click the bell to be notified of new videos.